Well, I mean, we should mention that I think this is the debut of Shirtless Loki. Congratulations. It's all been coming to this. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe it is. is it? It could be. Uh, I'm not the world's foremost expert, but I'm sure those will correct me if I'm wrong. Was this a focus group decision? Was this like, it's time, guys? It was, look, I, you'd have to ask Michael Waldron. It was in the script. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, it, you, no, no, it, <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely, it was in the, it was in the pilot, the first draft of the pilot that he sent me. And I was right. like, okay, Michael, I see what you're doing. Definitely was justified. You know, he is part of the story. He's, he's going, He's on his way from somewhere, going to somewhere else. What can I say? You know, just um, <laughs> there we are. There Look, and, give and, the people what they want. You know, I always talk to actors about like musing on set when they're like, you know, they're the side character, the supporting character, and they kind of like sidle up to the director or the executive producer and they're like, you know, maybe, maybe I should get my own story here. Like, is that, is that, did that ever happen early on? Even just like musing to like the powers that be like, you know, there might be something here. Maybe we should explore something about this character. I don't know. It was, I mean, there was always, initially in those early stories in the MCU, there was a, this duality um, between Thor and Loki and Loki and Thor. And that we had, that Chris and I had defined these characters together in opposition and i suppose it was loki loki was always defined by his relationship to thor and kind of vice versa so basically i mean i would imagine one of the great gifts of this and maybe a fear going in is like loki has been defined in many ways by that relationship with thor and other yeah. familiar mcu characters so did you see it as as an exciting opportunity for this to like see what Loki would be like unmoored from these relationships that we've gotten to know? Well, yes, and I think it was uh, one of my, I mean, I was so, as you know, kind of delighted by the opportunity and surprised and then confused because there was some head scratching about, about how, of how we would get there. But one of the things that I was excited by was actually in any drama, if you strip or take away from a character, the things that are familiar, then something has to be revealed about what remains. You know, so if you if you take Loki away from Thor, away from Asgard, away from um, all the things that he's used to being around, what makes Loki Loki? And in the ten years of playing this character, or the six movies across ten years, I, in my preparation and research, I've always found this extraordinary range and complexity that he has this massive history he has all these different multitudinous facets and contradictory characteristics and suddenly this is an opportunity to explore some of that in a new environment which would then reveal probably to me and i hope to the audience new things about him i remember talking to you like through the process of like when this was going to get going and you seemed so thrilled not only with just the opportunity of kind of being front and center with this character and exploring new facets but also being creatively involved i mean you're you're an executive producer on this as far as i can know i think you're the first of the marvel actors on these marvel of uh, these disney plus shows to be an ep on their own show i mean talk to me a little bit about what it's like to be a creative contributor too and what the most recurring note was you were giving to your collaborators on this that you wanted to capture in a Loki series? Gosh, it was quite, yeah, I, I just enjoyed it so much. I felt so, um, I felt it was extremely generous of everybody at Marvel to invite me to sit at the table as we were generating these stories. 95% of the ideas <laughs> that I had are not in the in the series at all, but maybe there are five, maybe there's five percent. I don't know. You know, I, I had some. I had a few good ideas. Um, but the thing that I knew I was the thing I knew I was useful would be my experience, my my physical experience of the of how this character behaves and thinks and moves and responds to various different external stimuli, whether they are events or characters or people, that's where I was able to, I hope, I was able to be of use. And also I suppose I had a, a kind of, a kind of limited library of stuff that I had always found interesting about the character, which had never been room to explore in the films. And, and I could say, well, what about this? You know, there's this thing I found out, maybe we should look at that. And those conversations around that table, as it were, with Michael Waldron, 
and Kate Heron and Kevin Wright and, and Michael's writing staff. I just, I'll, I'll remember those experiences. They were so enjoyable because you never get that. You don't get time to just right, fire right. ideas around and, and, um, and go, well, what about this, you know? And, and you just see where it goes, see if it might have a place somewhere in, in, in the story. It occurs to me when I look back at uh, this character and this pattern continues to a degree in the first couple episodes that I've seen, he gets beaten up quite a bit, Tom. You get, you've gotten your ass kicked in many numerous ways. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the things I used to say. I said, if there's any, I can't remember, I was like, I said to, to Kate and Michael at one point, Loki, if nothing else, has a slightly inflated sense of his own importance. Right. And, and if you are thinking there might be a moment of humor that you need, just, just pump up the hubris. And what shortly follows is humiliation. Right. Um, yeah, and it's like so man. He's like Ron Burgundy of like the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you heard it here first. However, I will say yes. this. He also, uh, what I'm excited, and maybe you haven't seen yet, is, is I'm excited to explore his, um, his magical power. And I think that's something we've never really tapped into in a deep way in the MCU. So I knew we were gonna, we were gonna get into it. And um, apart from being, you know, self-important and, and hubristic and, and, um, and puffed up and all those things, he's, he can be in the comics highly skilled at magic and we might get to yeah. see a bit more of that in the series. Eagle-eyed viewers have noticed from some of the early glimpses of the show that in his uh, case file, it notes his sexuality as fluid, as Loki's sexuality as fluid. And this is something that's been in the comics for years. Mm. Yeah. I guess now officially it's canon in the MCU. Is that something that came up in the conversations with Michael and Kate as something that was important to kind of like yes. officially put on paper? Absolutely, yes. It has been in the story of the character for hundreds if not thousands of years. Loki is a trickster. Boundaries and identity, it has always been fluid. And I've really, I've really enjoyed that. I remember even in my, when I was first cast, reading about, about that, that stuff and, and, and I'm really pleased that we have a place to explore it. So while you've been doing press for Loki, uh, your buddies uh, Hemsworth and company have been wrapping up the new Thor movie. Uh, I imagine you've seen the photo Hemsworth posted of his arms basically bulging out of his body. He's gonna spontaneously combust. Have you seen the photo? Chris, we, the world now knows, I think, Chris is an athlete um, of some, of, of infinite capacity. You know, I did, I thought of him actually, I thought of him while I was making this um, and we emailed a bit. Yeah, I got, it's, what's really interesting is they, they, you know, Thor and Loki run on parallel tracks and now they're in completely different places. You know, they would look, they would look across across the void and um, with some surprise, I think. This this series also kind of kicks off what seems to be like an important aspect of phase four, which is the multiverse. Like, do you revel in the fact that like, again, all these years in, Loki, he's at the center of it. He's at the center of the shenanigans that are probably going to be very pivotal to the next few films in Marvel. I mean, that's, as you know, that's well above my um station to even contemplate but yes I, I i found the the idea of alternate or parallel or contradictory universes just fascinating it's slightly it was kind of confusing for a while and there were, oh, there sure. were lots of conversations with like different colored pens on a whiteboard and squiggly lines and right. me going wait hang on explain it explain it to me again so they're just, uh, and they're, they're going back in time. Well, they're not really going back in time. They're sort of going through and around. And, but I think they did a brilliant job um, of cracking it. And, and I love the, 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 the analogy they use, that the TVA see themselves as the gardeners of time. And they keep, and, and they, the language of it is very, has got this kind of benevolent horticulturalist inclination. You know, they're pruning um, branches and they're just, you know, pulling out weeds and, and keeping the garden tidy. That's quite a serious thing to do, um, is to be, yeah. be the arbiters of reality. And maybe reality doesn't need to be uh, arbitrated or, 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 or controlled. Maybe reality wants to burst out and break free. Exactly. The, the first the first thing that occurred to me when watching the first couple episodes, you know, and I know, you know, we've had long conversations about our mutual love of film and filmmakers, like, at least in the first couple episodes, there's like Terry Gilliam in there. It feels like it's like Brazil yeah. and time time bandits. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, I love there's, I mean, it seems like there's a conscious homage to Jurassic Park in there, which I know you love, the kind of the Mr. DNA yes. exposition thing. Yeah. Yeah. So were these, were those films cited? Were other films cited in, in your early conversations of the kind of look and feel that you wanted to evoke? Yes, absolutely. Um, I know we all wanted it to feel very analog, I suppose. And the, you know, the TVA are archiving the past, the present and the future in enormous libraries, but they're using paper. And, um, and so we wanted to feel the tangible, uh, sort of tangible quality of this, this, um, complex bureaucracy and so, so yeah terry gilliam came up jurassic park as well blade runner came up a, a, a lot why wouldn't it because it's so brilliant <laughs> the movies of david fincher came up kate heron had architectural photographs i can you know i sub, i sometimes was like so is it like bill and ted or is it like back to the future 2 <laughs> um <laughs> you know what i mean it goes oh, we, yeah. we're going we're going to get we're going to go in we're going to drop in to the past and the future but is it the same? Is it Back to the Future Two, where it's the wrong past, and that's when I'm too old? Uh, you know, I was born in '81, <laughs> so I admit it. No, I, people, people understood. We're all, we're all the same age. I'm kidding. You, you, you find yourself kind of thinking about time. Yeah. All those great references for for time travel that you grew up with. So as we end, let's let's go back to the beginning. I mean, I remember our first meeting, 2010 Comic Con. Uh, it was the big uh, party, coming out party for Thor and Loki. You were doing your first press for it. What do you remember from that day in Hall H when you debuted the footage and we talked? What are your recollections? I remember exactly where we were. We were in like a lobby, and there were some very high windows behind us. Um, and I think you're wearing a like a plaid or check shirt. Is there's, that right? You'll, you'll see a tie, and you'll know you'll you'll know it. This is old because if there's a MySpace sign behind me, so you know wow. this is a long wow. time. Thanks to all your uh, you know your compatriots today. It's a very big day. I don't want to overhype it, but it's yeah. a big day, right? Yeah, it's a, it's, it seems like a big day. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, I know you were you were up for four. Yes. You end up you uh, look. This is yeah. no uh, chump change to end up as Loki. This is a cool. Yeah, character. no, it's it's actually epic. It's all probably worked out for the best. I don't think I could have sustained that level of protein and working out. It's Chris <laughs> Taylor. He's done a very good job <laughs> with that. So I'll leave it there. Okay. So so Tom, uh, what runs through your head when you see that? What was what was Tom Hiddleston of 2010 thinking that day? You think? What runs through my head is we both look very young. <laughs> 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 We're both and in our 40s now. Yep. Time has passed. It's so touching. It's so, it, it's really like, it's amazing that I've got, well, it's amazing that you and I've known each other this long. You're part of the journey for me, no question. Still here talking about <laughs> Loki. Um, as I said in the clip, it was, I think I say in the clip, it's pretty epic. It yeah. has been yeah. nothing short of epic. It has been this extraordinary journey. You know, being cast as Loki changed my life. Perhaps you know, sitting on those those high bar stools, I wasn't aware of exactly how much it was going to change my life. But by then I knew Kenneth Branagh had made an amazing film. Yeah. And I thought, I knew he'd made a brilliant, brilliant movie that was going to defy people's expectations. And I'll always be indebted to him for that.